that you're going to have in April? Well, we're going to. There's a reception that uh, members of Congress are having for the for the family, uh, obviously to welcome them here to Washington and try to make the case that love is love, and no matter who you are and who you love, you should be really treated with the same respect and equality that everybody else is. What does a day like today mean to you? Well, it's, I mean, we hope we're making history in the right way. We hope that the court will finally recognize that all Americans have the equal right to pursue happiness and to pursue their path in their own way and be who they are and love who they love and not have their rights uh, affected by who they happen to be in love with. And to me, that's a fundamental human right and one that ought to be respected. Now, we know that this case is with the Supreme Court. Do you feel like elected officials have done enough for same-sex marriage policy? We haven't done enough. I mean, we, we uh, in Congress could do much more uh, in terms of creating a, an environment where all rights are respected. Uh, but the court ultimately has to rule on the basic constitutional question. Are all people created equal in this country? And I believe they are, and I think it's a long past due for the court to make that judgment. You know, coming from Michigan especially, um, I, I find some pride in the fact that there are so many Michigan people here, but I'm sad that the governor and the attorney general forced this question to the Supreme Court, a question that we ought not have to go to the court to get an answer to. We ought not have to depend on nine people to determine the basic humanity of a human being living in this country. But if that's what it takes, obviously that's what we'll depend upon. And what do you have to say to your House and Senate colleagues who are on the other side of the aisle on this issue? I think they're on the wrong side of history, and they will find at some point in the not too distant future, I believe that many people who are on the wrong side of this question, who are fighting marriage equality, will find themselves standing in the same place that so many people who oppose the rights of women to vote or the rights of minorities to have access to the workplace or housing. There, we have fought these civil rights battles and in retrospect, we always see that those who stand on the wrong side of equality are proven to be wrong by history and I think that'll be the case here.